I just wanted to welcome everybody on behalf of NAU's Institute for Human Development. Um, we're sponsoring this series of webinars um, to provide some implementation training for AAC. So thanks for joining us. Um, I'm Nicole Anderson and I'm the program manager for our AAC evaluation and training program. And I'm gonna put my contact information in the chat. Uh, please contact us if you have a client um, or know someone who is interested in getting more information about how to get an AAC evaluation or training in the state of Arizona. Thank you, and I'm going to turn it over to Christy. Christy, thank you so much for joining us today. Of course, thank you everybody for joining. I know it's a busy time of year. I am going to keep my camera off for uh, Wi-Fi sake for most of this, but I would love to know a little bit about who we have today and um, why you're seeking this information that helps me make sure that I can address any questions. I've got slides prepared, but also I'm, I'm happy to um, check the chat and address questions at any point. So a little bit about me. I am uh, the Toby Dyna Vox consultant for Arizona. And uh, by virtue of virtual supports, I get to support everybody all over, um, which has been quite exciting. And I also um, come by way of a background in both special education and speech language. I am a licensed speech language pathologist by background, also an assistive technology provider. So I like to uh, know a little bit about lots of things, just like most of us. And I thought today that I would share a little bit more about TD SNAP, which is Toby Dynavox SNAP, and then a little bit about what has changed. And if anyone has specific questions about that or is looking to see something kind of specific, just let me know. Um, SNAP, which is now a blue apple, um, has been designed or was designed for emergent literacy. And so um, for those of you that are maybe new to this, um, one of the things that we look for is both alphabetic and phonologic learning. So we want our users to be able to be set up to identify letters, relate to sounds, relate to picture symbols. And um, the software itself started with Core First and the idea that um, we could structure AAC around a conceptual understanding of words. And so some of the things that you might do if you're in a school system or in therapy, you might be playing with names, you might be providing some explicit instruction. We have free writing activities if someone's using by touch. And I'm gonna switch over to show you. Um, so and Nikki, it says that I've um, lost screen sharing, so I'm not sure how to re-enable that, apologies. Um, we have a whiteboard in our software, and so I'm able to free write. I'm just gonna keep going. I'm, I'm chatting to, oh, there yeah, you go. Yeah, and I'll just, I can show you that later on, but um, there's a whiteboard with the option to free write, explore. We also have other, um, saved story templates and book templates because we want everyone to be able to access writing in whatever way. Um, we also want there to be full access to all 26 letters and that um, every writer, every individual should have access to um, those letters. So different templates, different options that could be available every day to you. Um, we when you first start TD Snap, if you're in a core setup, it will be an ABC keyboard, but there are lots and lots of keyboards, including now those that can access with a plug-in, a Chromebook or a laptop. So we also very much want to support the free reading opportunities. And so there are accessible books. Um, those include core books, they also are, um, downloads. And so that's pretty exciting that somebody can use those in whatever access method they want. And then the symbol itself, we know that without language, there's no literacy and that, whoops, and that we very much want everyone to be able to access. So TD SNAP originated with 
core as a place to start. And I'm checking in the chat. Um, Lynn, welcome. Okay, perfect. So core, lots of core language use for um, the population that you're supporting and serving. Um, core can be useful and flexible across contexts. This core language page set is available in um, over 10 languages, including Arabic, although some of the um, orientations of that, for example, if it's a left to right versus right to left language, um, will appear a little bit differently. And so I have users who do it with the picture symbol, who use text only on this page set. It's flexible. It has lots of different contexts and partners. And I have both children and young adults and adults using this page set um, on its own or in combination with something else. So one of the things that is newer to TD Snap or that people might not know about is that you can switch between page sets. So you can toggle between a exploratory or a Babel, um, Babel kind of page set. Um, Renee, thanks for joining us. And if you have questions later, absolutely let us know, okay? Um, and so, the nice thing is that you might have someone who's starting to use a text only page set, but you might have a, a backup that can show with um, pictures. So that combination is great. I'm gonna switch over and walk you through that a little bit. So um, when you are in Snap, it should look like, fingers crossed, the share works this time. Whoever's in Arizona might know Carolyn Musselwhite and the technology prayer. So I uh, did not do that today. I uh, might have jinxed us. Um, the uh, page sets are available, as I said, in over 10 languages. It's actually far more significant than that, but I'm, I don't want to misrepresent. The list is there. And if you're an evaluator or someone who is teaching that in um, the United States or abroad, um, you are able to um, access that. Uh, try and that share hard here. Let's see. Um, you're able to access that in um, an evaluator context as well. And so that gives you a chance to um, go ahead and um, do a few things. It lets you try out the software. It lets you try out the settings. And it um, will share it this way. This blue apple is your TD Snap. Hopefully everybody's seeing that. I can so, see it. Beautiful. Phew. Okay. So then this is the kind of basic setup. Snap is set up so that it can be accessed with both eye gaze, which you're going to see popping up on my screen, as well as um, by lots of different systems and setup. So one of the things that's built into the software, you can see I've got teal for tools here up on my bar. And I'm going to go into my user settings. So one of the things that's built into TD Snap now is access method. And so there are things like touch, which is our straight touch, I'm going to touch and use right away, but also touch enter with hold times and the ability to connect to PAPS. So um, frequently we might support individuals who are um, experiencing some fine motor difficulty or they might need that support because they are repeatedly pressing a button when they wanna select it one time, for example. So that the software holds all of these settings in it directly. You can also touch exit, which means I'm going to hold the button and get out. Um, and I'm a, an available resource if you're setting something like that up or for all of our users in Arizona. But also there are detailed guides on what we call the learning hub, and I will show those to you later. Also built into access are mouse dwell if someone's accessing by a head mouse or um, by a direct plug-in mouse. Um, we also have software settings built for eye gaze, which includes eye gaze plus a switch. So 
So that gives someone a little bit of control if they're starting to learn eye gaze or if they need to control that in combination and make a selection. Also in set up in the software are the supports for scanning. And so if you get to experience, experiment and play around here, you'll see that there's lots of different types of scanning. In our learning hub, there is a scanning 101, scanning 102, and scanning 103 series. It walks through all of those scan settings in high detail and shows you how to use those. Um, but you can one switch scan for someone who has, um, for example, only one identified switch site and walk through the software um, with row and column or like some kind of specific scan pattern that is assigned. All of that's very much built into the settings now. So I think that's great. In addition, you're gonna see we've got some additional page sets that are available and the option to customize. So this is our pod, pragmatically organized dynamic display layout. And you can see that if I branch chat words, I'm able to double tap in edit. So that's what I'm doing. I'm able to look at this one and see that it's semantically or pragmatically organized with the same picture symbols that uh, a user might know and, and recognize. You can also see that um, we have the option to increase the bold around it. We have the option to change backgrounds to dark colors and to make more space in between buttons. So all of that are options that are built into the software and they can be used with any TD snap, any page set. I also have, um, for example, the option to link buttons. So I'm gonna just play this and show you. So if you have someone who maybe needs a more predictive option, you can see that my you then led me to will, and then I'm gonna go to watch. Anybody watching YouTube right now? I think um, we have some users that are um, used to or, or maybe could really benefit from a predictive setup. And so that is an option. Also in TD Snap, under our page set, we have the option to easily change grid size. So I'm gonna go back to that our first page and we can shift all the way to um, in the standard settings an eight by 10 here, but also when you create your own, if you swipe down just a little bit, it's hiding. Maybe someone doesn't wanna be limited by that. So I can actually keep going in the software and set up my rows and my columns to expand that language even more. All of TD Snap is set up the same way. So when I'm signed in as a user, you can see right here, I'm signed into my, my Toby Dynavox account. I'm able to do things like when I go to the page set, create a new page set or download an existing page set. And you're gonna see then that I can load all of those right from my account. So save and share is built into the software. Also, there are real pictures. So if someone would benefit from a more realistic symbol set, those are also built in. So I can show you what that looks like. And this is that whiteboard I was mentioning earlier. Ooh, let me get up edit and show you here. And so I can add a picture anything I want, take it with cam. Most of our devices have a front and rear camera and then I can draw. So hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Did anyone bring questions? Let's see, Lynn's got one. Um, no, there's not a subscription fee if you are an evaluator. So that's a great question, Lynn. We have something called mytobydynavox.com that then there's a verification for professionals. And so if you go to the website, I'll drop that in the link. 
then it will ask you to verify your professional credentials. It's automatically set up for someone who is a speech therapist and belongs to ASHA. You can use that, use your um, professional credentials and it will immediately recognize your ASHA number. But if you're someone who is not a speech therapist and you're in an evaluatory or a direct support role where maybe you might be training somebody with AAC or helping to evaluate or, or try something out before an evaluation, then you are very able to put in that verify your credentials um, or you can search for professional when you um, look at the My Toby Dynavox, you slide all the way down to the page and it'll ask you to, to verify your information. And um, that is how you do that for your particular account. The iOS version is um, holding at under $50, which is the full software and lets you access everything. It's um, a speaking copy as long as you're signed into your professional account. And you can only be assigned or logged into one device at a time. And so if it's something where you want to be logged into multiple devices, then that's a conversation that maybe we could have another time. But absolutely, um, we want you to be able to explore and train your um, users or um, try new things out. Also, in the software, there's something called Gateway which is another way to organize language. And so um, I tell people that I know lots about a little, and so I'm happy to walk through these with you at any time, because I know tonight's gonna be pretty fast. But um, Gateway was created by Joan Bruno, who is of PRC um, background. And you'll see that this is a, a much more structured left to right and predictive organization for software. So, oops, did I lose it? There we go. So um, you can see the same color coding that we have across most of our software, which happens to be Fitzgerald Key, if you're kind of curious about that. But yellow for people, green for verbs or actions, got blue for descriptors, and then Orange is your things and your categories. And these can See, be- See, we lost uh, screen sharing again. We do lose it again? Yeah. Oh, all right, oh, let me just try this one more time here. And I was gonna ask, um, you were talking about gateway. Are, do you have a lot of gateway users right now? Um, I know we there used to be a lot, um, but I just haven't run into a lot of people using that recently. I think people who need gateway um, need gateway or use gateway. And I think it really just depends. Um, so, uh, I, I have a handful of new gateway users and I have, um, some users who were using gateway before and they've, they've adapted into TD snap. So it's, it's very much the same layout as, um, if you had somebody who was using gateway before, then the layout is, is much the same with a few exceptions and I can show you. So you still have access to all of the things that would be in um, TD Snap. So for example, the dashboard or, and I'm gonna show that for you. Also, you have access to dictionary and the search that's built into TD Snap um, now is available in Gateway when that used, didn't used to be there. Um, this one that I'm showing you is the child language and literacy. Um, there's different versions of the gateway layout. And I have multiple users who are using the scan page for gateway that is text only. And so that um, works quite well if you're auditory only scanning. So that is a great question. I will show you. So um, our dashboard, and you can see that I've got the setup to scan, can be as simple as volume controls, which are built in, or you can link. And so behind the scenes hidden here, um, we have integration with our software and multiple devices um, for Google. And so that's for Google Nest, Google Home Control. And then uh, much like you might've seen before with controlling Siri or Alexa, it works 
quite well um, with Google to do things, including control like smart home functions. So like I wanna turn on my light. So that's what that dashboard is for. And then this is the dictionary layout. So lots of times um, where I see gateway used still is if someone is having difficulty differentiating between what they need in school and home. And it's been determined in an evaluation that they need that bit of separation. So some of those more traditional school type pages are available. I'm gonna go back to my home, but you still have this um, very functional core layout and these can very much be changed if they need to. So um, I do see far more users on either um, core first with you know, any modifications that needed or um, pod here in Arizona, but that just happens to be. Right. And then when you um, are signed in, you can create a new page set at any point. So you can have multiple page sets. So I have some users who, for example, sometimes they direct select and sometimes they scan. And so you can have different versions of your pages led. So I'll show you real quick that scanning um, page just so that you can see what that looks like. And when you go here to your page set, if you've loaded a new page and you scroll down, select it, it will automatically switch. But you see, I haven't lost any of the pages that I already have loaded there. And that's nice if you're evaluating or you're teaching multiple users who have some subtle differences in their page sets, you can have those saved all the time now. Um, when you look, this is the scan page set, for example. So there's an alphabetical version. There's also, then the categorical, which this is my thing. So that's meant to be customized. Things gets you all of the categories. And then you can see that this is very much set up to column scan and be auditory or visual if you want it set up that way. And then back to home. Um, I do have a few users that use that as a text only um, touch page, but much more common to have it be scan. And then if I you. We also have lots of versions of the pod layout that all falls under TD Snap. So, um, for example, I'll show you a 60 because there's quite a bit of progression in that. And also predictive and with options to add your own topics, save messages, and add your own stories still while using. Um, picture symbol. One of the things that is um, unique to TD Snap and quite handy if you're supporting in a remote place, if you're going to be out and about, here sometimes we have the pool, is that if I go to page, then I'm able to just import or export one page at a time. So that's a share, like maybe we've made some customizations and I wanna share that with you. But here hiding at the bottom is print pages. So if I go to print, then you'll see that I can choose a specific page or I can select all by clicking all and then selecting all at the bottom. And I can print up to a hundred pages of snap at a time. So as you see me kind of scrolling through, what that means is you can have easily have a backup copy of your pages, both for editing purposes, for data documentation, also just general low tech backup. I'm gonna to switch myself back to core here. That's what it looks like at an eight by 10. And I'm going to switch my grid just so it's a little bit more workable for the video. You can see the software can grow by grid size and the motor plan is maintained with additional add, um, added buttons or columns um, as it goes. So um, when you are at a more reduced grid size, for example, you won't see all the question words. And so they've tried to make sure that this is set up um, with as much consistency and motor plan as well. The other thing that I think is real helpful to know about SNAP and one of the things that 
is quite handy, is that it's very, very easy to try to customize the um, settings. So see how I all I have to do is one click and I can change the background. You can do that separately to the message window, to the toolbar here, and also the core itself. You can also under page set and preferences, turn the message bar off. And if you want, turn the toolbar off. So that might mean that you're able to experience more buttons on the screen. And perhaps you don't need that message window. It's more important to use that um, screen area for um, one of those things. You can also choose to have your toolbar on the right hand side. And that may be helpful if someone has a particular visual need and they know that this is going to be consistent and their changing vocabulary is going to be on the left, for example. Um, all of our um, supports and backups are built in there and you can find under your user some unique features that people don't know about that have been updated. So data tracking is built in. So I can show you the counts, although I think um, most of my teams and users find that a little bit visually distracting. But you can also, when you're logged into my Toby Dynabox, get a usage report. And you can set that for a particular page, just the toolbar, or for the whole page set. And that can be very helpful if you're trialing, if you're getting ready for an evaluation, or if you're just trying to learn more about a user's habits and you want to do that. So that My Toby Dynavox backup then of that data is shared and it's available virtually. Also in preferences, and these are um, some, some choices. You can turn automatic inflection off and then that gives you better control over how things work. You also have what's called the light bulb, which lives here. All of this is in preferences and I'll show you the light bulb. Whoop, maybe close that. So for example, our newest update is snap 1.18. And so if I click that light bulb, it tells me that when it's lit up, yellow, it tells me that there's something new. So maybe I need to update my software. It's a visual reminder that there's an update there. Also, um, for example, this is telling me about the new Arabic symbol access, um, how you can undo and redo. That's a really big thing. I don't know about everybody else, but I tend to make some mistakes. And so now I can undo what I've done in the message window. Um, there's also an undo and redo and edit as well. Um, suggestions and problems and, and tech, tech support feedback is built right in under Adam, edit and system. And also there's a handy listing of all of the update notes every time you go to that light bulb. So that is quite um, useful. Also, um, one of the things that is um, important to know about all the updated symbol system is that we update our symbols every two weeks. So if, for example, you are looking for something in particular and you don't see it, please let me know or please go to our website and there's a request a symbol button and we have graphic designers on site who create the symbols. So when um, news change, when current events uh, update, you know, all of those things, we want to make sure that symbols are available. So um, there's a, a full tracking of that on the website and they will immediately refresh those. Um, you are able to download at no additional cost high contrast symbols um, by selecting that. So it looks like that when you download. Also, you have access to sign language symbols and then Snap aphasia photos are thin line and real photos. So that can be helpful for users if you've um, had to get a picture of everything in the past. Now those are there. So say, for example, I went to my personal words and I wanted to add my top favorite things. I can choose that, go to my symbols now and my internet has yet to catch up with my presentation, but when I 
um, search, for example, more. Um, then you'll see that immediately the high contrast and then the standard symbol are there as well as sign language. So um, if you are looking to adapt TD Snap or use it in a customized way, those high contrast symbols are very helpful. And you'll also see that we want and want it to be easy with as few hits as possible. So this personal core is here. So if I go back to my bullseye, which is my home page and core words, then I'm able to hop right into my personal words and add that. Um, so maybe I want to talk about my favorite foods or my favorite show that I'm streaming right now. Lots of options for that. Um, I'm checking, taking a peek here. Absolutely, Lynn. Um, if anyone else has any questions or they'd like to, you know, if they're thinking of somebody in particular, I don't mind. A, I have a student who, or I have a user, user who, and then I can show you some of those adaptations as they go. Um, the other way that you can um, customize is by using what's built in. So we have a core scanning page. So I'll show you, it's called core for scanning. And when you go to core for scanning, select it, there we go. You'll see that it's set up a little bit differently. It's set up to group scan. And so that setup is automatic. So um, if you have somebody that is gonna be using as a scanner, a switch scanner, then um, that customization of settings is already done for this page set. Also hiding in the dashboard here is some learn to scan pages. And so when I go to learn to scan, um, I can have this set up for um, some pretty errorless learning. So, um, for example, uh, you can change, and on every single one of these pages, there's one button where you can program their favorite. Um, same thing for music. Um, and then you've got options to have it loop back. So it's a very easy to start with page if someone is exploring. You can add whatever symbols you want. You can experiment with that and do that however you like. But I think that that's a, it's one of the best kept secrets in the software that we have those, those great setup um, pages. Also, I'll take a peek and show you what's in dashboard. I'm gonna make this a little bit larger, go to my page set, grid size, oh, let's go there. Okay, so you can see again those Learn to Scan pages. Access It is the plugin that I mentioned, so you can plug right into a computer. So maybe you've had students using their devices to write before, or you'd like to make that happen. Access It lets you plug into any device with a USB port and control that, work that. There are certainly remotes in here. And then Google Home, I'm gonna try to not say some of these words so I don't set off a flurry of electronic devices, but um, you have the option to broadcast to another location by a Google Mini or a Google Hub. And that can be real helpful if say someone's on the other side of a house or maybe in a different part of the classroom. Um, some early calling, or this can be as customized as possible. So, you know, maybe we want to call mom or um, have some fun with some fun stuff. So I'm not going to say any of these right now, but you can certainly change these. I um, am happy to share, but I have a fun list of things that I like to do. Did you know that there are Quidditch stories on Google? I did not until this past year. So, um, one of these, um, one of the options with this, as long as you started out with OK Google, if it is built, if someone is using one of our i series devices, that's an i13 or an i16, um, you can use this, and it's immediately um, sending a signal. So it's not just auditory. The infrared and the hardware for Google control are built into those devices. So that's um, quite neat. There's also a way to set up phones with pictures and 
hiding up here. If I make this button smaller, maybe, I can show you that you can also customize the message bar and you're able to share right to a particular app or share that message. So maybe you wanna do that with stories. Um, so that's your access it. I'm gonna share it with my computer. You could share right to your Google Assistant. And then you also have other options, which I have disabled right now, but many of my users like to text mom or to share a story. And so that can be set up for WhatsApp. Checking to see. Are there any questions or things that you're thinking of right now, anybody? Um, I think that many of you are in schools. And so I also find that these topic pages are quite helpful. So if I go to, for example, the classroom page, you can take a look and see that these are organized and they're, they're meant to support organization and um, quick learning of vocabulary, as well as the conversational side. So you are able to, and, and I oftentimes try to program these with my device users, um, but it's meant to, um, you have the option to have that set up for phrases while still having full access to your core language. You'll also see in SNAP that then that quickly gets you into some related links. So fewer hits to those buttons. Also you have here um, some stories, first then, uh, three-step sequence. This is a scripted story, um, which can be used for social, behavioral, or pragmatic support, and then also built-in visual timer for every single one of those topics. Um, then in addition to those, you can set up your own, and they're very customizable. The colors represent questions, comments, positive comments. So they're very organized in the way that they're programmed. I'll show you the keyboard. So this one is set up ABCD um, order, but it can be changed. There are many keyboards and they can be predictive with or without symbolization on the buttons. And also things can be color changed. So if blue is not a good visual color, all of that is customizable. And so um, I can certainly have one button stand out from another. Um, I can add buttons that predict lots and lots of um, easy customization. The other thing that's very available and built in now is that you can quickly link. So I'm gonna go into my actions and um, Core first is set up so that you have the flexibility and the users have the flexibility of using their core words in whatever order they want. But maybe for um, somebody you're thinking of, they would really benefit from predictive structure in their AAC device as well. So then all you have to do is quick link to an existing page. And if I go to my main food list, all I have to do is click, create a link, and then you have a predictive option. So it's set to not default that way or not quickly link um, unless you choose to, but very easy to do that. Uh, I think that um, is also one of the most helpful things I've seen is that being selective and, and allowing some of those quick navigations. I'm gonna go back to my core words. Um, and just check in with everybody um, because I've been yammering on it to stop my share for a second and see, are there any questions about that rapid tour of TD Snap? For the group that we have, are you using devices already? Are you using SNAP and want to learn more? We're just kind of curious about it. Everyone's welcome to um, 
start their video or start their audio as well to ask questions. Absolutely. You're very welcome to do audio or chat, whatever you're most comfortable with. I know it's it's it feels like the beginning of the week and an evening. So um, we're we're all uh, appreciative of your time here today. I um, think that um, very much Snap TD Snap was rebranded. I do, and I will um, share this. I've had a few people ask, "Well, why is it not called Core First anymore? Why is it TD Snap?" I think we have um, many adults who are also using and don't necessarily use that core configuration. Or you might have users who start with core first and then progress on to something else. There is, I can happily um, share and show you this as well. Um, so when you open up, still have me with sharing? Fingers crossed. Um, yes, we can see. Beautiful. I also um, have some people who might start with symbols and then switch into text. And so it's very easy to um, switch into what is our text page set. And that um, is available in multiple languages as well. It can also be set bilingual. So English, Spanish, English, French, for example. And then if I switch to the text, you'll be able to see same layout, same editing, and same option to customize. Um, the kind of unique part about this is that if I make my message hop out of edit right now because of my lag, but if I make my message, You'll see the prediction and this is um, very similar to other, some of the other text um, page sets and softwares on the market, but you keep that easy editing, that same editing of Snap, the built-in ability to share, which can be super helpful. And then there's this notes page, which is great for stories. So if you have somebody who's working at a text level, all I have to do is copy the button, click that button, except that's available. Those buttons can be selected by eye gaze. They can be selected by um, scan or by touch. And then you're able to save your own messages as a user. So that is helpful. And um, I have some of my staff who have created categories within that to save their own stories or save um, notes home. And that can be real helpful as well. You'll still see that dashboard and you can launch things like a phone or an application or your Google Assistant again. And then you can send that message text somewhere if you want. So I think that um, is helpful to see that the SNAP um, can extend to all different ages of users. All right. You might also. I'm sorry. That. I'm. I'm. I was muted. I was just gonna. Um, Chris, you were at time, so I just. And I was to... gonna say that is what I have to share for you. Okay. But one last check on if there is um, anyone else with a question. If not, I'm gonna drop my. Um, contact in the chat. And I think it's also on the um, information. Um, we have a pretty extensive learning system. And so if you would like to learn more about any of that, you can also go to our learning hub and there are um, some great videos and supports to learn a little bit more about access. Thank you, Christy. We appreciate all that great information. Absolutely. Everybody have a good night. Um, I wanted to say also that if anyone needed um, a certificate of attendance, I am able to provide that. Um, so please email me and I'm going to um, quickly put my email into the chat again. Um, 
So if a certificate of attendance would help you in any way, I can provide that. Just email me at nicole.anderson at nau.edu. Uh, I wanted to thank Christy again, and thank you, John, for facilitating the technology. Um, and I'll stay on for another minute or two to answer any questions if anyone has questions about the um, AAC evaluation and training program. Thanks, Nikki. My pleasure. Yeah.